China has the largest population in the world with 1.2 billion people or 21% of the global population. The nation will experience severe social and economic issues brought on by overpopulations on the following years. Overpopulated areas have caused resource depletion, pollution, and unfavorable living circumstances. The Chinese government has attempted to find a solution to the issue of the growing population in an effort to encourage investment and support the economy. China's finance ministry announced in late December that it had offered local governments an early allocation of 1.46 trillion yuan or $229 billion in quotas for 2022 special purpose bonds. This was done in the hopes that the large-scale infrastructure projects would boost local businesses and generate jobs. In this video, we'll explore China's mega projects that changed the nation. The Sichuan Tibet Railway At the cost of 319.8 billion yuan or $50.6 billion, construction on the project began at the end of 2020 and is scheduled to be finished by 2026. It is regarded as top priority for China's railway construction after obtaining support from President Xi Jinping and being classified by the state-owned China Railway Group as a significant strategic project. After a connection with Qinghai was established in 2006, the Sichuan-Tibet Railway served as the second rail route connecting Tibet and the hinterland regions. The remaining 1,011 kilometers will be constructed using tunnel and bridges and will cross regions with an altitude of more than 9,000 feet. The 1,629-kilometer railway, which is divided into three sections called Chengdu Kangding, Kangding Ningchi, and Lhasa Ningchi, spans 650 kilometers in Sichuan province and 979 kilometers in the Tibet Autonomous Region. When the whole Sichuan-Tibet railway is completed, it will reportedly only take 15 hours to travel from Chengdu to Lhasa. The South-North Water Transfer Project Northern China has been the country's economic, agricultural, and demographic center for centuries. However, due to the rapid growth of these three factors, the per capita share of the region's limited water supply continued to decline. Since the early 1950s, China's ambitious plan to move tens of billions of cubic meters of water yearly from the Yangtze River in the south to northern areas through three canals has been studied. A total of $62 billion were spent on this massive project, which officially started in 2022. The eastern canal travels through the provinces of Jiangsu, Shandong, and Hebei in the same direction as the original Grand Canal. The Western Canal begins at three Yangtze River tributaries close to the Banyanhar Mountains. It travels through the province of Qinghai, Gansu, Shanxi, Inner Mongolia, and Ningxia. In contrast, the Central Canal with a length of 1,432 kilometers begins at Danjangku Reservoir in the central province of Hubei. In 2021, a total of 9.7 billion cubic meters or 2.1 trillion gallons of water were diverted, which is the same as 3.2 million Olympic swimming pools. According to the Ministry of Water Resources, as of end of 2021, around 49.9 billion cubic meters of water has been diverted since the Eastern Route opened earlier that year. In May, she toured the Central Route and hosted a symposium where he said that the project was necessary to satisfy both human needs, ecological sustainability, and safety. Additionally, the South-North Water Transfer Project supported economic growth and helped to lessen water insecurity in the North. Furthermore, it provided food security as more water was available for irrigation and improved water supply for industry. In the long run, this project will help China cope with climate change. According to Minister of Water Resources Li Guoying, who spoke at the 2022 Annual Work Conference in January, authorities will go on with follow-up projects along the Eastern and Central Canals while starting the early stages of work for the Western Route. The Yantai Dalian Undersea Tunnel Underwater tunneling is a reasonable solution for China to deal with its lack of land and the rapid growth of traffic and population. Underwater tunnels provide shorter paths than bridges and roads, which saves time. 
Also, diverse resources such as oils, gas, and water may be diverted concurrently throughout the traffic route. A train may cut travel time from 10 to 1 hour, eliminating the need for the 8-hour boat ride. The planned tunnel linking the cities of Byantai in the east and Dalian in the north would run around 90 kilometers under the Bohai Sea, which is more than twice the length of the Chanel Tunnel. The idea was initially proposed in the early 1990s, but its viability has long been questioned due to the complex technology needed and limited transit demand. However, after the central government included it in its strategy to revitalize northeastern China in 2014, it received considerable notoriety. A 260 billion yuan investment will be needed, according to the late tunnel specialist Wang Mengshu, the project's strategic planning team leader and the deputy chief engineer of China Railway Construction Group. In 2013, the State Council received the proposal for review. In May 2019, construction proposals were submitted to China's main economic planning body, the National Development and the Reform Commission, or NDRC, for approval. However, further decision has yet to be made public. Nevertheless, there are indications that the project is progressing. For instance, Yantai City's Penglai District High Speed Railway Station has made arrangement for cross Bohe links. The Bay Panjang Bridge According to the Guinness World Records, the Bay Panjang Bridge in the Guizhou and Yunnan province of southwest China is the tallest bridge in the world. This bridge is situated on the line between the two provinces. The bridge spans the Bay Panjang Grand Valley at the height of 565.4 meters, which is about the same as a structure with 200 stories. The suspension bridge with cables stays in the second longest in the world, measuring 720 meters at its widest point. To give you a sense of how tall the bridge is, the whole New York One World Trade Center could fit under it. The Bay Panjang River Valley is an isolated, mountainous area with limited road access. The gap needed to be closed to construct a more efficient transportation route between the two of the poorest and the most rural provinces in China. The goal of this project was to build the route and fill up the gap. The bridge aims to provide a stable transportation connection across the river to promote economic development, improving living conditions, and link remote communities to the rest of the nation. As a result, this benefits drivers, commuters, and commercial vehicles like trucks and buses because it lessens traffic and reduces travel time. Which of China's mega projects do you believe will benefit the country the most, and why? Tell us in the comments section below. And with that, we hope you enjoyed today's video. If you haven't already, click the like and subscribe button. We'll be back soon with another video about luxury, so remember to activate the notification bell.